Last week, I introduced everybody to the B5S4, the second project car for this channel. If you watched the last episode, you already know, but if you don't, this car needs a lot of work. Specifically, it needs a lot of work before I can drive it and enjoy it, and before we can get to modifying it to be even more fun. Our main goal for today is to get this car closer to the point where we can drive it around town. One of the first things on the list is to replace the rear control arm as well as get some new tires on this vehicle. The car currently sits with a bent rear control arm and bald rear tires, and both of those need to be sorted before we can get the car aligned. First things first, we need to get the car in the air, and I want to get all four wheels in the air because I'm going to be taking them off and putting them on more than once. I picked up four jack stands so I could get an entire car in the air, which is a game changer for me. On top of that, I also used my new tool set for the first time, which was very fun. Now my first goal for the weekend was to replace the bald rear tires so I could at least drive the car around and repark it. As you can see, these are pretty bad. As you'll learn by the end of the video, this wasn't exactly the best use of my time, but I kept it in here just to show that not everything's gonna go right the first time when you buy a project car. It took me a while in my life to realize this, but mistakes are how you grow, and you're gonna learn more from making these mistakes and learning from them than being correct the first time. I'm gonna order a pair of four really nice Continental tires for the car. The two tires on the rear are on the wires right now, and I wanna be able to drive it around for a little bit, so they actually have two used tires of the same brand as what's on the car now, and they're in good condition, and they said they'd mount them on these rims, so we got these in the back. They're a very kind company, and I'm very appreciative of their help right now. Just made it back from Le Schwab. It is dark, and I don't want to work on the car too much in the dark, just because it's a safety problem, and I want to be able to get some good footage, so we're gonna wait till tomorrow, but I am gonna get it off jack stands and put the rear two tires on for now. I didn't realize this until the next day, but I actually had a problem. I assumed the previous owner put the correct size tires on the car and that they actually fit, but that wasn't the case. These are way too big. The original owner put the wrong size wheels on the car, so I have to wait for smaller wheels. So what I'm gonna do is put these nice ones on the front of the car, since if you look here, they're not actually gonna rub way more room up here and we're just going to run the bad tires on the back until the other ones get here and we're not going to drive the car much so it should be fine. Since I hadn't really driven on the tires they were willing to exchange them for the right size. At this point in the weekend I hadn't done a ton of research into it and I thought I could just run a lower profile tire. Consequently I spent time moving the new tires on the rear back to the front so that they wouldn't rub and I could still exchange them. I was told it would take a little while before the tires I ordered would get into town so I decided to work on the problem that made this car so cheap. As you can see the rear wheel on this side is completely towed out. Now you may be thinking that I can just adjust the tow bolt and make this better. While I can make it marginally better, the root of the problem is the fact that it has a bent lower control arm. It's the guy on the bottom right here that has four bolts on it. I was able to source a new one and we started the installation. The first step is to remove the wheel and after that you can remove the emergency brake cable. This part is rather easy to install. It's really just four bolts that hold it on. And the strut won't be under any pressure when the car is jacked up, so you don't have to worry about compressing the spring. Really, the only annoying part of the job is that Audi decided to put the brake line through the control arm. So in the process of replacing this, you're also gonna have to worry about the e-brake cable and the brake lines. You see me using a pry bar here to remove the bolt, and that's just because it's kinda stuck in the bushing. It's not because it's under pressure. Now is the fun part of German engineering. Everything in a German car seems to serve more than one purpose. From the perspective of a fellow engineer, there's something really beautiful about that. However, from the perspective of someone who likes to modify cars, it's a little bit annoying. Since the brake line runs through the control arm I'm trying to replace, I need to completely dismantle it and drain it in order to replace the part. The final bolt I took off of this car is the rear tow bolt. I'm gonna go on a tangent because it's really cool how this thing works. It's basically an off-center bolt that as you tighten one side, it will rotate in the control arm itself. Normally when washers rotate in a bolt, it stays centered, but since this bolt is housed off-center, when you rotate the bolt and tighten it in different locations, it will either tow in or tow out the wheel. It's really cool how this works. It's such a simple idea, but it is really fascinating when you think about it. Along with the brake line being threaded through the control arm, you also need to take out the e-brake cable. There is a plastic housing that holds it in place inside the control arm, and if you use a screwdriver, it'll come right out.
Now putting the new part in is a lot easier than taking the old one out. The first thing you really do is thread the e-brake cable in. Then it lines back up and you can put all four bolts back in place. Unlike when I removed the bent control arm, I found it easier to deal with the brake line after I had already gotten the four bolts to hold it in place. Now, not a lot of people have dealt with their own brakes, and a lot of people think it's really scary. One thing you really need to be wary of is getting air into the system. So when you take apart a line like this, you need to be sure, be sure, be sure, be sure that you bleed the brakes properly afterwards. Brake fluid is designed to not compress, so when you step on the pedal, that same force is applied to the brake caliper. Air, however, is a fluid that can compress. So when air is trapped in the brake line and you step on the pedal, your brakes are going to feel spongy because the air is trying to compress and you're not actually able to translate the right amount of force to the brake piston. Another thing to note is to make sure that your brake lines are airtight. You don't want to over tighten, nor do you want to under tighten these connections, otherwise you could cross thread the bolt or introduce air to the system. The final mechanical step is to reassemble the e-brake by putting back on the clips you removed. It hurts your fingers a little bit, but it's pretty easy to just push it down and slide the little pin in place. Like I mentioned earlier, you're going to need to bleed the brakes. Before I knew I would have a friend helping me today, I bought this single man brake bleeding kit. All this does is provide a vacuum to help you suck out the brakes because you're not able to press the brake pedal down and deal with the bleeder nut at the same time. I'll go much more into detail on bleeding your brakes when I put braided lines on the car. A brief gist of what you need to do is go to all four wheels in an order specific to your car. On the S4, you go furthest to closest to the excess brake fluid container. You're going to open the brake bleeding nut. If you're using one of these vacuum kits, you can generate a vacuum on the brake bleeder nut and open it so that all the air comes out. Or if you're doing it with another person, they can slowly press on the brake pedal to build pressure and force fluid through the system. When each of the brakes bleeds only clear fluid and no air bubbles, you're good to go and you can tighten the nut and put the cap back on. Now, at this time, I was ready to drop the car and drive it around the block. I was under the impression that these wheels and these tires were close, but that they weren't going to rub. Consequently, what I decided to do was to take the car off jack stands and try to take it around the block. I made it all of about five feet before I realized that the owner before me put wheels that simply didn't work with the car on the car. This really goes to show that you need to do research before buying aftermarket wheels and tires for your car. Not everything's gonna work with your suspension. I totally get wanting to modify your car for looks, and putting big wheels and tires on the car is a great improvement. The only problem is when you put wheels that just don't work with the car on. These wheels are just simply too wide to fit any tire. This car has an old style suspension and requires a very specific type of wheel to clear the calipers and the suspension at the same time. And that's just for the 17 inch rims that fit. If you want to try to run 18s on this car, which this one currently has, you need to find a very specific wheel. So I had a dilemma. I really liked the Autohan racing wheels, but it didn't look like I was going to be able to get tires on them that wouldn't rub in a corner. And I intend to thoroughly drive, tax, and enjoy this car. So I'm not going to want it to rub on my suspension whatsoever. I had a tough decision to make. As much as I wanted to run the gorgeous wheels that came with the car, I had to look for another option. It'll take me time to source 18s that fit, but thankfully, I used to have a B6 A4 Avant, and I actually have the wheels from that car sitting in my storage shed. So in a stroke of genius, I tried these on instead of the 18s to see if they would work.
You see, the main problem for fitting wheels on a B5S4 is these meaty front calipers. But with the spacers, I think we'll be okay. I honestly like the look of the silver with the blue more anyways. It's not Subaru colors. No wonder this thing stops poorly. It looked like these bad boys were gonna work, and I felt super lucky and glad that I kept the rims for my old car. Since it was a much more common tire size as well, the tires would be ready much sooner than the ones I had ordered. I had a bit of extra time today, so I decided to vacuum the car and make it look a little bit better. I'm gonna be smart about this. So this S4 currently handles like a truck and it rubs in every corner every time you turn the wheel whatsoever. The car has a lot of body roll due to the bigger tires. These big tires are just too large for the S4. They hit the knuckle, I think it's called, or the upper control arm on both the right and the left. And I think I would rather go back to stock wheels currently. I'm gonna keep the Atahan racing wheels for later, but for now, while I get the car sorted and fine tuned, I wanna make sure I'm not rubbing and ruining the nice tires I bought from Les Schwab. So I'm gonna exchange the two 4540 R18s that I have for the stock tire size, 22545 R17, and I'm gonna use my wheels from my A4 that I had before the TT. So that's the goal for today. Now these wheels aren't nearly as clean as the Atahan racing wheels which came with the car. But personally I kind of like the silver with the blue a little bit more. But the biggest pro of all is that these tires with the wheels will clear both the calipers and the suspension. No longer do I have to fear corners and I can actually use the car for what it was built for, driving. There are however a few things that we need to do before we can take it around the block. I hinted about this earlier in the video, but the front and rear pads and rotors for the brakes are pretty rusted. Honestly, to the point where I don't feel super comfortable driving this car long distances with them. Thankfully, I have some fun parts in the mail. In the next episode, we are all set to remedy this and take the car on its first official drive. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, consider dropping a like and subscribing. I really enjoy making these kind of videos and the amount of feedback and support I'm getting is unreal. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.